What's up guys? Barbarian or Bust here with the Hellhammer build. Shout out to Hottest Hellhammer who asked me to do this. So this build is very similar to my charge upheaval build. I tried to do a mono upheaval build and you could do one but I've just found this one it's a lot more smoother it's a lot more fun and it just works better. I will say though with this with the Banish Lord's Talisman you're a little squishy. So there's two ways to do this. The only two uniques, three uniques, sorry, you really need are Hellhammer, Tibalt's Will, and the Red Ring of Furore. If you have these extras, like Banished Lords, amazing. And I did put in Ring of the Ravenous for this one. This one works for, for the Earth Striker. But this is a little squishy, because I don't have on the Helmet of Might. That 20% damage reduction is huge. When you don't have it, you're doing Nightmare Vaults of Tier 100. It does get a little squishy, and you might die once or twice. If, you, if that doesn't bother you, then don't worry about it. And of course, if you had a Shaco, that would be amazing. That's more than ideal, but I don't have one yet. So yeah, if you don't go with Banished Lords, then put Iron Warrior on your amulet. Up here, we have the amulet of the Iron Warrior. And of course, we use max health. You don't need max fury, but you need cooldown reduction and you need one armor roll. And then we have Juggernaut in, in the chest piece. And that's where I have two of my resistances and another total armor roll, which is not needed. And damage, I tried to switch the damage out for max health, but I, I wasn't able to roll it. And then we have the Sundered Ground, so that our upheaval does hit and overpower every 25 seconds. So you want max, max ranks upheaval, critical strike chance, attack speed. Attack speed is huge. I feel that the upheaval animation is rather slow. Definitely use the attack speed. And strength. Main stat's always awesome. To Balt's Will, I have been waiting for these for so long. And I got a really, really sweet roll on them with a with a max damage. So that's really awesome. If you're using charge and if you have these, it's it's just a no-brainer. To Balt's Will goes with charge. It also goes with the iron skin because now it makes you unstoppable. It also goes with Wrath of the Berserker. It also goes with Rallying Cry. To Balt's Will has so many synergies. It's amazing. And it also goes with Metamorphosis, which is also another way to be unstoppable. So in your boots, either go Metamorphosis or go Ghostwalkers. The choice is yours. Hellhammer. This item, honestly, not my favorite. Only because the other three stats are kind of crappy. Like, obviously, Ranks of Upheaval, amazing. Unfortunately, I got a crap roll. But damage reduction from burning enemies, so-so. Damage to burning enemies, uh, and two-handed two bludgeoning weapons. I mean, that one's decent, but I'd rather have, like, strength or overpower damage. But the Hellhammer is a lot of fun, and I do like the way it changes upheaval. I think it is better. Pardon for my dog barking at probably nothing at the front door. And next, <laughs> you have to have the Ancestral Charge for the cooldown reduction, because we want our ans we want to be able to charge pretty much whenever we want. And for here, I went with obviously two swords and then two maces just to get some overpower damage and to get some crit strike damage where critical strike is important for here. But on this one, you want all stat strength, you want damage with berserking, but and then you want overpower damage. This sword is, we don't want the vulnerable damage, but it is what it is. And on this one, this is a season two power that came back as well, just like metamorphosis, the blood boiling. This is awesome. We have a couple different ways to overpower. This is one of them. Uh, the Earth Striker is another. Uh, this is another one. We, we, we have a bunch of ways to overpower. It's amazing. This is another one. And then we have the M Bone Breaker. So yeah, this is also a lot of fun. And when it drops all the, the volatile blood, it's, it's pretty cool to walk through. And in the two-hander, we have the Earth Strikers. So we use the only way we weapon swap is with the Ring of the Ravenous. If you don't have Ring of the Ravenous, you will not be swapping weapons unless you put charge on your two-handed slashing. This is also, again, perfectly rolled with all stat, strength, overpower damage, and damage while berserking. And then Ring of the Ravenous, we have that for a couple reasons. One is the critical strike chance. Two is for the brawling skills. And three is because it helps us weapon. It is how we weapon swap. The Red Ring of Furore, again, if you use Hammer of the Ancients, Upheaval, or Death Blow, this is the only ring to use. 
and the Banished Lords. So this is also a great amulet, and we have Critical Strike Chance, which is great. Ranks the core skill, which just helps all of them. And with the resource generation, that's also a lot of fun. So this build with purpose is using uniques. I know I do a lot of builds that have zero uniques. Right now we're really late into the season, and the season is also going to be stretched for another month. Hopefully you have a chance to get some of these uniques and give this build a try. And then we use two-handed axe for expertise. We put two points into lunging strike, which we do not use. Then we put max points into upheaval, to enhance upheaval, to furious upheaval. I like furious upheaval over violent. We have other ways to make us berserk. Then three points into imposing presence, and then one point into rallying cry for enhanced rallying cry to tactical rallying cry. And then we use iron skin, for enhanced iron skin to tactical iron skin. And we put three points into swiftness. I always like to run faster. I mean, technically with our charge, you don't you don't really need swiftness, but I, I just put it in because I enjoy it. And with charge, you also take max points, enhanced charge, and power charge. And then down here, you take three ranks into aggressive resistance, and then three ranks of prolific fury, and three ranks of battle fervor. And then here, one rank of thick skin to three ranks of counteroffensive. And then, of course, we take the trifecta as we using our hellhammer with heavy handed brute force and wallop and these points are extra so you have four points one point for tempered fury three four invigorating fury what you could do if you wanted is you could take these out and you could put one point into pit fighter and put three into slaying strike if you don't need the health but when you do level 100 if you don't use the helmet of might i would suggest this to give you more health versus this. And then for our last skill, we have Wrath of the Berserker with Prime Wrath of the Berserker to Supreme Wrath of the Berserker. And for our key passive, Unbridle Rage. So our first board, we have Brawl, and you only want to get the 29 willpower just to get that 18x damage for your brawling skills. Uh, Brawl goes really good in the first board, gives you a bit of an armor bump, gives you a physical damage boost. And our second board is Bone Breaker, where we take Crusher. The third board is Carnage, where we put Might. And I like putting Might in this board so we get a little bit extra bonus to the Berserking. These little nodes here and the damage to close. Sorry, damage reduction from close. And moving up, this board is Weapon Master for Exploit. Exploit is here because it was just an easy path, but in theory, Exploit can go on almost any board, but this is one of the easier ones to do. Then our fifth board is Warbringer, and we put in Marshall, and we do our shout for, for the cooldown reduction. And we also take a couple extra points of Fury on Kill. I really like Fury on Kill, especially for using Unbridled Rage. So this is kind of this is kind of clutch for me. And then our final board, as always, will be Blood Rage. And here we take Ire. So I put all my extra points into Ire because I got this little cluster here to kind of bump that up as most as we can. And then for a little friend, it's the same as it's been for the whole season. I, I haven't changed it. So I have Flash of Adrenaline with the duration support, tactical support, and initiative support. Then with Tempest, we have the resource support safeguard support and fortify support all right now let's show off a nightmare vault let's do level 99 all right so the combination that you want to do is you want to open with the charge to get the six stacks of upheaval for that right there and then you hit him with the upheaval so we've got six and hit them with the upheaval. And these little balls here, oh man. When there's a big group, it's a lot of fun. And because we have fury literally all of the time, because of Tavalt's will, this is a really fun way to play. But again, if you find you're a little squishy, swap out the helmet, swap out the, the amulet, and you'll be super tanky. But I, I only do that if I if I feel like I really need it, and honestly, I don't. 
And you want that cooldown reduction from Marshall, so in case you don't charge like right there. Right now our charge is like five more seconds. So that's when you want to hit Rallying Cry. Honestly, just for cooldowns. We get, we get enough. We have so many ways to make uh, Fury, like, boom, we're like for full Fury. Destroys everything in the game. But you may die once or twice. Like, poison pools still suck. Poison pools drain your fat, your life really fast without without having that 20% damage reduction. But you're pretty much doing an overpower hit all the time. And you're definitely also doing a critical hit almost all the time. And if you're not going to do Nightmare Dungeon 100, like, if, if you're going to do Nightmare Dungeon, I don't know, 85 and below, swap out Marshall for Wrath. If you swap out Marshall for Wrath, if you do Nightmare Dungeon 85 and below, uh, it, it gives you, like, just more crits, but I find then you could use also the accelerating aspect on your two-hander and you can do a lot more upheavals and make it a really more upheaval bound play. Which is pretty cool, it's a lot of fun, but you're standing still while you do upheaval, so you're kind of more of a target. And in Nightmare Dungeon 100, it just doesn't really work as well. So that's another way that you could play it. And I would get rid of, um, I would also get rid of Ring of the Ravenous while you do that. And then you would take off like Earth Striker because you wouldn't need to really swap back and forth. And to, if you take a Ring of the Ravenous, put in Unrelenting Fury. So the core skills will give you back up to 30%. So yeah, again, a little squishy, but it doesn't matter. It can clearly clear everything. It's almost like if they get lucky and, and they hit you, then it's like they'll kill you. But for the most part, you're absolutely fine. Look at that. I don't count, like, if I'm doing a, you know, if my next hit's going to be overpowered. I literally just play the game and I, I don't look at anything except for, like, my life total. Because that's all you really need. Like, you're going to kill everything on the screen one way or another. So very powerful build. You could try it in the gauntlet. I feel like it would be good in the gauntlet, but you would want more attack speed. So because gauntlet is level 70, I would take out the Ring of Ravenous and I would take out the, um, the, uh, the Earth Striker. And I think that would be a really good play style for that. I might try that actually. See, look, I'm kind of dying here. There we go. But Fury is definitely a non issue. So, there's also another thing you could do is you could even put in uh, Limitless Rage. Because. We're at Max Fury quite often. And that would definitely be another option that you would do. I don't know what it would take out for that though. I feel like if you didn't have a Hellhammer, then you would use Limitless Rage and put it on the two-hander. Yeah, 
Yeah, watch out for those friggin' poison pools, man. Ah. Uh. Another thing with controller, like I wanted to hit the elite there, and instead of hitting the elite, I hit the guy behind him. Sometimes that's also mildly annoying. But. Overall, the build is really good. Like I said, mildly squishy, but definitely you have no fury problems. And as you see, I'm not using Lunging Strike at all. Like if I hit X to open something and for some reason it targets an enemy, that's the only way I'm using Lunging Strike. So modify your playstyle if you if you find it's just a little squishy and that you want to use a Helmet of Might instead. Or if you don't have Vanish Lord's ta Talismans as well. All right. And th this build, it won't one-shot Duriel, but I think you can do him in like three shots, maybe four. I've definitely been able to three-shot him, but that's solo. Like, th th that's not a party of four. Not ready yet. So yeah, strategically use your... Rallying Cry to get your cooldowns. As long as you don't hit a poison pool, you're absolutely fine. Oh! <laughs> That's hilarious. I just said watch out for those, and then I literally die to one. <laughs> what a crappy way to end the video. <laughs> Anyway, this is the the Hellhammer build. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for asking me to do the video, Hot as Hellhammer. And I'll see you guys in the next one.